My dear viewer, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are watching this channel from, I want to invite you at this time. Today, 36 of our presentation and of these 40 days of prayer. I invite you to join me in the theme that we are looking at right now. The three angels' message. Yesterday, we looked at the, whole, the power, the angel that surrounded the world, shouting and shining with a message. And we saw that this angel had authority and we related this authority to what happened when Jesus gave authority to his first disciples as he sent them to go preach the gospel in the Great Commission in Matthew 28. I invite you now, friend, so that we look at the first angel. And I, as we do that, please join me in prayer. Eternal Father, we need your guidance. We need to be illumined by your own power, your own presence, that Father, our, our spiritual eyes may behold you and our ears may hear you. And the Lord, we can join in according to the message, the first angel's message. May we understand this message. Bless my dear viewer and use me according to your power. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. My dear friend, I invite you to read with me Revelation chapter 14 in verses 6 and 7. This is what this word of the Lord says. And I saw another angel flying through the sky, carrying the eternal good news to proclaim to the people who belong to this world. To every nation, tribe, language, and people, saying, fear God, he shouted, give glory to him, for the time has come when he will sit as judge, worship him who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all the springs of waters. My dear view, this is the first angel's message. It comes after Revelation 13. When in Revelation 13, we are seeing there is a mark of the beast to be placed upon all who fear for their life and therefore worship a beast, not God. For fear of their life, they gave up their faith. And so immediately after that, heaven could not stop but send a message. A message so that in this world, as popular as it is, after all have been almost convinced to give up their faith, the time has come through this message when everyone, every man, every language, everywhere in the world is invited to give glory and to worship him who created the heavens and the earth. The issue of worship is the issue number one 
in this life that we are living in. You may think that your purpose of living in this life is to have self-actualization, to realize your dreams, to, to, to go around the world, to provide for your family. And at times, this leads to self-glory. It leads to you and you alone to be the one to be glorified, praised, and be thought to be a celebrity. This has become the driving motive to many people. People have lost sense of worshipping the only true God. And so, my friend, I invite you to look at this text and listen to what the Spirit wants us to understand at this time. Urging us not to glorify ourselves, not to so much fear human beings, whatever power they may wield, but to worship the only true and living God. Friend, could it be that you are glorifying and speaking more about your children, your achievements, your career? How many Degrees what you have been able to achieve for the years that you have had here in this world. And so the first angel's message is a message of challenging our hearts. Where have we placed our hearts' desires? With whom is our destiny given? Do you worship the true creator or have you turned to another? And so my friend, at this time, I urge you to think about this, to, to look at what the challenges in chapter 13 and ask yourself, as I ask myself whether I am truly a worshiper of the living God. I invite you to look into your life because when you discover and when you realize that it is not about you, it is not about how secure your life is, but about how you honor the Lord God, the creator of heavens and earth, you will realize that God is first and foremost your creator. He loves you so much. And that is why he doesn't want you, wherever you are, from whichever tribe, whichever nation, Whichever people, whichever kindred you may come from, you are special in the, in the eyes of the loving creator. And so he invites you to give him his place in your life, to honor him with all that you are and have. And so to surrender and worship him in truth, and in spirit. I welcome you, my brother. I welcome you, my sister, my dear viewer, so that we can truly worship this creator and know that he created the heavens and the earth in six days and he welcomed Adam and Eve in their unsinful state to worship and to reflect upon his power. Friend, when you look at yourself and how wonderful gifts you have been given, 
Remember it is God who gave you. And so you will honor him. And not only honor him, but also join him in worshiping him and recognizing his creation power. In six days and on the seventh day, the Lord rested and is inviting us to truly join and worship him who created the heavens and the earth and the fountains of waters. This language is in Genesis and is inviting us to know the true Sabbath and serve God truly. Won't you come and serve and worship God in truth and in spirit? I invite you to pray with me as we worship and seek the Lord to guide us to worship him truly. Let's pray. Eternal Father, thank you because of the message of the first angel who reminds us that despite human beings and systems in this world, that force men that may cause fear and others to lose faith and give up their worship of the true God. Lord, you are inviting us to think about who you are, that you created us and you love us so much, and you are inviting us, you who created all these things, to know you truly and to worship you in truth and in spirit. Lord, you are inviting us despite our backgrounds, despite our limitations, despite all that we have missed before, just like the Samaritan woman who, though she had lived a sinful, reckless, hopeless life, yet you chose to invite her to drink of the water that you offer. And so, Lord, even today, you are inviting us to your living water so that as we come to you, our thirst, our hunger, our spiritual desires may be met so that you can make us whole and complete and give us the power to overcome because when we know that you are our creator and we give you honor and glory, all things will fall in place and we will serve you and fear you only and give you honor and glory. Bless my viewer. Bless my listener. Bless me, O oh Lord, and thank you for this message even as we pray praying for the session, praying for the decisions that are made, praying that you may give us the leaders who will steer the church to achieve and accomplish the work that needs to be done now. So that you may come and take us home from this tired, sinful world. Lord, accept our prayers and meet us at our points of need. Forgive us for our times we glorify ourselves. Let us only lift and worship you in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I pray. Amen. Dear few, I invite you so that we can continue worshiping God. And if you have not made a choice of worshiping in the Sabbath keeping congregation. You may seek to worship and fear the Lord, the Creator, and find a Sabbath-keeping congregation. May the Lord bless you, invite you to other sessions. May God be with you. Amen.